So I'll let him introduce himself while I load him up. Good morning. As uh, Eric said, my name is Scott Morrill. I'm the emergency manager for Gunnison County. And thanks for having me, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, so being the emergency manager for Gunnison County, um, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. It's pretty easy because most of the folks in Gunnison County are pretty self-sufficient, pretty resilient. Although, as we all know, that demographic's uh, changing a little bit. But um, as I was working on this, um, you'll see on the first slide, it says, so you want to live in the sticks. And um, it occurred to me that uh, there's different definitions for that. Um, the people in New York City think that Denver's living in the sticks. And people in Denver think that living in Gunnison's living in the sticks. But I think for most of us, the idea of living in sticks is uh, out of town and, and uh, a long way from from a lot of stuff. Um, so the, you know, the, the main part of my presentation is just talking about um, being prepared and ready and thinking about a lot of this stuff before it happens. Um, as Eric mentioned, there's been um, a lot of, uh, you know, we've seen around the country a lot of, uh, So rights forward. Yep, that's okay. Important. And then there's a pointer right there. Very good, thanks. So you know, rural living. This is life. There's a lot of advantages to it. Um, no neighbors, no traffic, no solicitors, things like that. Um, but you know, the, the, there, those can also be downsides. Not having neighbors if you need help with something. You know, if you're in a in a tight spot. Um, not having a neighbor close by could be a, th uh, a problem. But um, yeah, so the, 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 the top three pictures are, you know, why it's great uh, to live in a rural area. The bottom three, um, I think, explain why we all live in Gunnison. So living in a rural area, living in sticks, what could possibly go wrong? Um, a lot of benefits, a lot of great things about living in a rural area. but. There's also a lot of things that can go wrong. Obviously, wildfire is one of our biz biggest risks, and uh, and it is throughout the uh, the western part of the United States, as as we've seen. Um, snowstorms, you know, we're having a what I consider to be a normal winter for a change. A um, little bit of snow, pretty cold. But uh, you think back to the winter of 2007, 2008. For those of you that were around, that was that was a huge winter. Um, I got really really tired of shoveling snow that year. I'm kind of getting there now too, but I think it's just a function of old age. Um, then you have um, the technology, technological issues, um, power outages, internet outages. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple power outages. One was caused by the weather, another was caused by a um, distracted driver, um, hence the picture. But, uh, you know, it, it's amazing how reliant our society's become on electricity and on the internet. And you take to, those two things away and it creates a lot of problems. So this is where I want to spend uh, a lot of time um, recognizing most of you have been here for a long time. And like I said earlier, you're very self-sufficient. Uh, but some things I'd like you to think about are if, if you do live a long ways from town, you know, if, if you're a half hour from the fire department, 45 minutes from the ambulance getting there, um, do, you have, do you have plans in place, do you have processes in place to help you get by till the Calvary gets there? And, and probably the biggest thing for those of us, because I live out on McCabe's Lane, which isn't that far out of town, but uh, a couple summers ago I tried trimming the fingers on my left hand uh, with a lawnmower and it didn't work out so well. And I had to call the ambulance. And um, so I'm already a little bit stressed out. And um, trying to give them directions to the house was, was problematic. And so I just encourage you to think about stuff like that before it happens. So you know, if you live in a faraway place and it's, there's a lot of turns and it's hard to get there, before you have to dial 911, think about the directions you're going to give to the dispatcher. Because the dispatcher's gonna ask you a lot of questions. And if you're dialing 911, you're probably already having kind of a bad day. And so trying to remember that stuff as you're, you know, you're already stressed out and trying to give directions, it, uh, it creates problems. So I would just encourage you to think about what those directions are gonna say and then write them down. 
and that way, if you have to dial 911, you don't have to think about it. It's right there in front of you. I used to be a 911 dispatcher, so I'm speaking from experience. It's really tough for people to articulate that stuff um, when you know a loved one's having a heart attack or whatever. But also, you know, train your kids, train your family, show them that document. If you have visitors that are visiting, make sure that they know how to get help to the house. Um, Again, as a dispatcher, I had numerous occasions where people were visiting and something bad happened and they had no idea where they were. And so that just, that makes a bad day even worse. So I kind of dat dated myself with some of the pictures up there. Anybody recognize that? Emergency from, as a show in the 70s, Adam 12. But uh, so the, the other piece of this is, uh, you know, try as they might, the, the first response agencies in Gunnison County don't know every single address in the county. And so if you're dialing 911, like I just said, the better directions you give them, the quicker they're gonna get there. So the other piece of that is, is if you have to get out. Um, and you know, the, a horrible example was just what happened in, in Paradise, California. Um, a lot of people lost their lives um, because the evacuation just didn't work the way they thought it was going to work. So you living in rural areas, think about how you're going to get out and talk with your family, talk with your neighbors about that. Um, do you stay put? You know, those are all things, things to think about. And then if you do have to evacuate um, and you and your family get split up, how are you going to communicate? Do you have a meeting place? Are you going to communicate by cell phone? Are you going to grandma's house? You know, what's, what's the plan? That reunification piece is, is um, it's really big. And that's what stresses a lot of people out, is not knowing where their loved ones are. And that just, that just makes a bad situation worse. So make sure you have a, a way to get back together and talk to each other. Is anybody here off the grid? Like no internet, no power? I, I, are you? So <laughs> um, I won't spend a whole lot of time on this topic, but um, during the Rosebud fire up by Pitkin in 2016, there, there was a number of people up in the Quartz Creek properties that, uh, you know, by, um, by design, they had no power, they had no internet, they had no phones. And the concern was if we had, had to evacuate that area, how are we going to get a hold of them? And, you know, we worked something out, but it was kind of a last minute deal where their neighbors who were on the grid would um, make the effort to get up and notify them that we had issued an evacuation order. But, Never happened, so it wasn't much of an issue. So the, the last part of the presentation is just talk about steps you can take um, to help protect you and your family. Probably the first thing is, is, is uh, mitigation. And mitigation is trying to eliminate or reduce the risk before it happens. So like with wildfire, which is our biggest threat, um, defensible space around the homes, cleaning up around the homes, making sure your wood piles aren't uh, right up against the house, trying to keep the, the leaves and the brush away from the house. Um, also building materials, if you're replacing a roof, maybe put a metal roof on instead of uh, asphalt shingles or shake shingles. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, um, start thinking about what you're going to do, preparing to, to get out. and. You know, make sure that the plan is communicated to your, to your kids, to your whole family, so that they know what the plan is and what they need to do um, in an emergency situation. Don't forget about the pets. And I put an iguana on here. Um, I helped in uh, Boulder County during the floods in 2013, and uh, it was amazing what they were having to deal with in terms of evacuated animals. Um, we, we had a live video feed of the Boulder Airport as they were evacuating people, and there was more animals and reptiles coming off those helicopters, and there were people. It's pretty impressive. But uh, so the other thing is, is making sure that you have um, have your records in a place that's easy to access. So like your medical records, um, birth certificates, things like that, that are like borderline irreplaceable and that you might need in the near future. Just make sure that you have that stuff um, close by and, and ready to grab if you need to. So there's some, some resources. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff on the back table back here um, and feel free to contact me. There's um, some websites up there. The West Region Wildfire Council has a great program uh, for mitigating against wildfire and it's cost share. 
So um, depending on the size of the project, um, the council would come out and do a, a site assessment and, um, and then uh, once the work is, is scoped out, they would share the cost of the project with the property owner. So it's a pretty cost effective way of doing some good solid work around the house. And then those, those other three are just more preparedness websites. Um, Ready.gov is, is run by FEMA, but there is a Colorado website too that's specific to the state of Colorado. And obviously uh, Red Cross and Salvation Army. So that's all I got, any questions? Yes, sir. Um, this thing about the emergency phone number, is that part of you too? Thank you, yep, appreciate that. Um, so for those of you who have only cell phones, um, so Gunnison County utilizes a system called Code Red, so it's our version of Reverse 911. And, but all of those systems, regardless whether it's Code Red or Reverse 911 or whatever, um, they're, they're programmed with only landlines in them. So if you want your cell phone to be able to receive messages through our Code Red system, you have to register them. And um, I do have some of those forms up there to tell you how to get the website and what to do. And it's really easy to register. Uh, the, it's, it's pretty much Scott proof. But um, anything else? Yes, sir. Do the, do the satellite phone companies, how would they program to tie into the local 911 system? Um, I mean, if you're using a satellite phone, like you can run satellite phones for hunting season, and some people have them. Uh, I know some folks live way far out who have home satellite base stations. Do they, I mean, it's just sitting there having to explain to somebody in, in Texas that, okay, yeah, I'm right here, but I actually my emergency services are going to come out here. That is a great question, and, and, and that's a huge issue with satellite phones. So you, with most satellite phones, you cannot dial 911. If you dial 911, it is going to go to the, um, to the area where, that's, where that satellite phone was, was built or registered or the home company. With satellite phones, you have to dial the 10-digit number. So for Gunnison County, that would be 970-641. Um, 8,000, which goes to dispatch. So that, very good question. No. Right. And, and so that has happened where people have dialed 911 in one area and they wind up talking to a dispatcher across the country and that, that doesn't work out real well. <laughs> so. Anything else? Yes, sir. What's the status of Edison County's um, GIS based uh, 911. So, like, if you're a rural landowner, we have a system where they're plugged in, so the first responders can just like get the address and they have the route. Or yes, yeah, so so if it's a landline phone, for the most part, that will happen. There's still glitches with the system where there's problems, but and I'm just kind of pulling this out of thin air, but I would say 90, 95 percent of the time, um, that landline phone will pull up a correct address and with a map on it and everything else and, and get the, the public safety agencies right to where they need to go. Cell phones are a different, quest, uh, a different issue. So what the cell towers have to do is triangulate off of the location of the cell phone. A lot of cell phones these days have GPSs in them, which helps also. Um, but it, it's not 100%. And so if you're using a cell phone, it's even more critical that you be able to really, really clearly articulate um, where you are and how to get there. Um, but if you're on a cell phone and you tell them your address, do they already have the built-in route? Yes, they do. Yeah, and so so the dispatchers have the ability to, to um, once, the, once they ha can put the address into the system, um, the map will self-populate, but there's still a lot of challenges with getting the fire department to a very remote home that they've never been to before. And, and so being able to help walk the dispatcher through that um, is gonna be really helpful. And as we all know, GPS systems are not, you know, they're not 100%, they, uh, they lead us astray fairly often. Um, kind of on the topic on some of the people's questions, I used to work for one of the phone companies here in town as far as the locations. But for some reason, you have to call 911. Um, 
It could take up to 15 minutes from your cell phone for them to locate your GPS. But if you call from a landline on 911, it could take seconds. Yeah. Well, because, like you said, when you call 911 from your house phone, your number comes up and who you're registered to, and then not only that, your address. Yes, ma'am. Also, with a cell phone with a GPS, a lot of these roads don't have winter maintenance, but that might be the shortest route. And that's not cool when the ambulance is, has to turn around and backtrack and, you know, come in another way. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you so have just, to know that ahead of time right. and, and think about this. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, it just reinforces the fact that, um, you know, just have a plan in place and make sure you got directions written down for, for you and your family. Um, you know, it might be one way in during the summertime, but a different way in in the wintertime. Dale? Uh, I'd like to recommend that spot system for those of us who are getting younger, you know, and we're wandering the woods and things like that around the <coughs> emergency situation. All you got to do is push that button. Yeah, they know exactly where you're at. You don't have to worry about talking to anybody because it's already. Yeah, so so what what Dale's talking about is you know a lot of a lot of hunters, a lot of outdoor enthusiasts use those things. Um, the spot system, I believe, that's a proprietary term, but there's a number of systems that are similar to that. Where, um, yep, you can just push one button and it bounces off a satellite and it tells the closest emergency services um, where you are. And but again, those aren't 100 percent either. Um, there's been a number of cases throughout the country, throughout the world, where those buttons have been pushed and um, it didn't work the way the system was supposed to, but for the most part, they worked very well. A little bit extra time to ask some more questions. But is there any help with that cell phone with the code red? If you put, does it ask for your yeah, so, address to match? Yeah. So, um, so the code red system and the 911 system are two completely separate systems. They don't, they don't talk to each other at all. So. The code red system is our way of reaching out to you if there's a large emergency and you know giving evacuation orders or other information the public might need regarding that information. The 911 system is exactly the opposite. That's a way for you folks to call in dispatch and get the help you need.